Good morning, Mr. David Trotin. First of all, thank you very much for welcoming us in your studio. I'd like to start this interview with a definition of your status as an architectural producer, since Periferique is renowned uh, to promote architecture in a non-conventional way. Can you tell us about your approach to architecture? For us, it's a global approach, because uh, we have the feeling that uh, it's important now to make project, have reflection on the city, on the scale of the construction, of the use of the building, and uh, in the same time it's important to talk about that, and uh, not only make things for you and just keep it in your office, but uh, try to transform a sort of um, private work in public work, and have this exchange uh, with a um, lot of people to try to, to, to show what is uh, the interest of architecture. Because in France, and perhaps in Italy is the same, the architect have, the, have a strange position. We, we produce building uh, than, uh, in the city for the public building or for the living of the people, and people are always a little bit uh, critic with architects. They have the feeling that architects uh, uh, make bad transformation, uh, make uh, transform the city for not for the, the good, but for the, the, the bad. And uh, it's important uh, to, to, to show that some architects uh, don't do that. Some architects produce new form of city, new form of living, new form of, ar of architecture for the... For for happiness and for the uh, for the people have better life than, than, than before, and it's more and more important now with uh, sustainable architecture to have this this uh, communication about architecture. Then for us, the the way it's to make building and after make books or communication or other event around architecture to to to, to show what could be architecture in the city and what is, why it's good for people. Since your work is very complex, I believe, and you are three partners, I understand you were founded in 1996. I believe that your, probably the organization of your studio has changed a lot in the past years. So what about now? At, at the present, how is your work organized? Do you have distinctive roles or...? We, it's, 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 it's a, we have kept, at the origin we are two team of architects, two office of architects, because we have a separate life and we have decided at the moment to, to work together just for the quality of the work, not just to found an office, but by the f f way that it's better if you could exchange around architecture. If someone have an idea, it's good that another one say, okay, your idea perhaps is good, but you have another opinion and make a sort of workshop permanent permanent workshop around the ID and around architecture. And we keep that. And we are still two offices. We have one th this office in the north of Paris, another in the center of Paris. And for more or less project, we are working uh, together. With in a s we begin in, a, in, in this work to work in a, in, a s in sort of new concept of uh, make architecture together. For example, we work around uh, Kadavreski. It's a way that uh, you have uh, an, an office produce a part of a building, another another part, and we just uh, stick the, the, the two parts together. Or we make some project when we try to find a, a share uh, new sharing of architecture of the part of the project to, to we don't want to make something uh, common but we want to to to, to keep the, the different uh, energy of separate part close one to one uh, it's a spirit of the city in the city you have building separate building uh, some of them are good some of them are bad and the the, 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 the result it's a uh, the quality of the city it could be the same attitude. Then we like this game uh, around the, uh, the new strategy to make project together. Not only just put all the ID in a sort of basket and melting mix, pot, voilà, <laughs> melting pot, but have this uh, separate uh, identity, close one to one. It, 
it's more close of the reality of the society. We are living together, but mm -hmm. we have our own identity, and we, we, we want to, to keep that. Well, I think that this is a little bit the description of your work, because um, I know that your work has focused and is still focused on communication a lot. Mm -hmm. Since you work in the editorial uh, field, architecture, design, and you've built many different buildings um, dedicated to communication, such as um, the project in Nancy, or museums, cafes, bars, and clubs, and uh, all these type of projects that are obviously dedicated to the public. At this point, I'd like to ask you, uh, what is your idea uh, of the relationship today between architecture, media, and communication? It's a special period, perhaps before it, it, it's very different, uh, but more and more uh, some project became uh, just a communication act. Mm -hmm. It's uh, perhaps it's not really new when uh, Louis XIV decided to build Versailles, it's an act of communication. But at this period, the power communicated by architecture. But uh, the things are, are moved. The power now, it's uh, not communicated by building, but communicated by um, uh, action, by uh, commun uh, media, by... Mm. In another level, uh, cities are interested by architecture, actually, because they have the feeling that it's a, it's a way to transform the city, to show the, the, the interest of the politics for the city. And it's they don't build uh, uh, palace or church, they are building uh, often in France, actually, uh, housing project, housing uh, eco quartier or some project uh, interesting for the sustainable architecture yes. and uh, for the new strategy for living and things like that. And in this uh, attitude, uh, architects have uh, a possibility to make interesting projects with identity, and uh, it's not uh, I I it's now identity of a building. It's not uh, a problem often. It's a uh, it's a trademark. It could mm -hmm. be interesting to, to for 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 a small city to, s to to say, okay, we have a very new architecture. We are a power uh, full city. We want to right. then. It's interesting. I'm not interested by the building for the building. I'm interested for the relationship between the building and the city. Mm -hmm. And um, if you just drop some interesting building, it's an uh, uninteresting uh, city, it doesn't work. It's interesting to create link between architecture. Then for us, the, the, the work uh, of, uh, of the architect actually is to make special building with some case a very uh, interesting uh, experience of architecture, but in the respect of the context of the city. And uh, I think that in France, we have this kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, perhaps I, I, I do a link with communication, and we, we, we create in, uh, in Paris a sort of uh, association of uh, 15 uh, offices of architects mm -hmm. called French Touch. And uh, French Touch uh, decide to produce uh, um, a hair book of architecture. We call it optimistic hair book. Uh, and it's a, a presentation of what happened in France uh, during the last, uh, it's beginning in uh, two, two, uh, 2007, and we, we, we prepare the, 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 the next issue for, for this year. Uh, it's how to work with uh, interesting architecture, new architecture, but in the respect and with a link with the context. And it's very French, this attitude. Because in French, in France, we have a lot of context. And if you if you look the architecture in uh, Switzerland, they don't have a lot of choice. It's always uh, <laughs> uh, at the front of, uh, of the mountain, and uh, they, they don't have sea, they don't have uh, this kind of different, different, different architecture. And the, the then this uh, specific uh, contextuality of architecture, it's uh, something very interesting to produce uh, ambitious architecture. And uh, then it's perhaps a link between uh, creation and uh, after when you have the, all this creation, it's important to communicate about, to say it's not just like that, it's uh, a really, a really a strategy, really uh, an interest that uh, French architects have of, of this relationship between uh, context and creation. Well, I think that this concept is very near your last, one of your most um, 
renowned projects. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Atrium, the university complex mm -hmm. in Paris, Je Sieux. And uh, obviously we have a very articulated project there. And I believe that um, the, the architecture uh, and uh, the relationship between architecture and the urban surroundings is conceived in a very contemporary way and probably takes care of this concept that you yes. just expressed. Um, is that, would you like to tell us something about that type of project? How you managed to work on the surroundings and the context and mm. the city? Uh, in the case of Jussieu, the, uh, it's very interesting to have this kind of, uh, of project to, 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 to do because uh, you arrive in a, in a place uh, amazing, at, made at a time when architecture was very triumphant. You, you could build a sort of borough in one time, in perhaps five years, they built all the, 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 the gris uh, of, of, of Jussieu. It's a sort of, uh, the architect who built that was a, a guy fascinated by industrialization of architecture and at the same time of the Japanese Zen, sort of mix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, all the, 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 the period was a, a mix of uh, uh, try to find uh, poesy in industrial uh, production sort of, uh, then they are working uh, with a uh, sort of um, uh, perforate metal, they are working with aluminium uh, shaders or something mm -hmm. like that, and uh, the regulation of the, of, the, of the tram was very important for, 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 for them. And uh, we have the, we, we arrived here and uh, it's a competition uh, with uh, uh, very interesting uh, architect. You have uh, Ibo Sevita, Lacaton et Vassal, uh, Jacob McFarlane. Uh, we have several with important. different approach uh, of architecture. And after, um, and, and, and for the result, uh, we are not a lot, perhaps only, we are two teams on five who choose to don't stay in the, in the regulation of the, of, of the grid. Mm -hmm. Because uh, all the project made just an angle like that. Tac just finish the, 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 the grid and f with the same proportion with uh, like if you if you just co make the continuation of the original uh, building uh, and in our case we decide to, to 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 make sort of evolution we keep the the, the high of the uh, building we keep the, um, the the opening of the of the between the, the, the slab and the and the first floor uh, but we change it's a sort of mutation you, you when you are here you feel the whole building but when you are at the front of the new building it could be in another place mm -hmm. we, we, we try to, cr to create a sort of continuation but uh, uh, hybridation of, mm -hmm. of, of two models of architecture and we we try to to, to, to make in this university something very simple we, we try to work with that and make a project around the the exchange of uh, of people mm -hmm. and uh, we don't design uh, in first a building but a way of working a mm -hmm. way of meeting people and uh, it's a uh, it's what it's uh, doesn't work in the whole university because it's a sort of machine of uh, uh, of uh, architectural machine. You have just a lift and uh, and, and, and small staircase, and people don't see another one. You arrive, tack, you go in your office, and you going down, and you and all this uh, relationship that you could find in the traditional city, mm -hmm. we try to put it in new architecture. When you are in the middle of, of Jussieu, it's looking a little bit like a casbah. In the, oh, okay. uh, we like this, this, this spirit of creating mm -hmm. inside architecture a sort of uh, small city. One of the most I iconic elements of this complex building is the facade. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you like to tell us what you, what you were, were inspired by? And obviously the use, I, I guess, in that case, of it's the a material. The, the, the facade of a building, it's like uh, it's a, a close. You could define a very interesting uh, content of, uh, of a building. At the moment, you, you, you need to finish it, to, to, to give him a, a personality, to give him a, a, special, uh, a special role in the city. And um, I think it's, uh, it's important to create a, a relation with the facade that uh, it's a mix of uh, one thing it's we don't like to have a facade only the same uh, always the same 
we want changing facade. We want facade not uh, the same uh, in the morning and the middle of the day and this evening. Uh, we want uh, atmospheric facade. If you have a cloudy sky or when you have a shiny uh, weather, it's not the same facade. We we want create a sort of um, uh, to show what it's a project. It's important to show what it's inside the project. Because if you just build a sort of block with small window and you don't know if it's office, uh, uh, housing, or an industrial building, it's it's uh, it's not good for the city. It's good to, to have this kind of relationship that you, you show a little bit what you what you are. Uh -huh. It's important to have this relation to show a little bit what you are. But uh, with this kind of uh, dentelle of uh, of, uh, of uh, aluminium, we have this effect. We have this effect of uh, uh, emotion with the building. It's uh, when you see this this image, it's uh, very attractive, very. Uh, and in the same time, uh, during the day when the building is it's uh, it's, um, it's uh, with with the light of uh, front light, the building look. Uh, more than a traditional building, it's more close, it's more strong, it's a, it's a, it's hard, a little bit hard. We love this this moving of sensation with architecture, and in the in the fact, it's a it's a double reference of architecture. When we are working with this kind of things, I, I told you um, about the, the the period when the the whole university is built and all the work of this period. Uh, try with a um, uh, lot of people who um, work with uh, perforated steel at this at this time and in uh, one way it's uh, it's a link between the 15 50s uh, yeah, when architect and designer use perforated uh, sheet of metal and, and now but now it's it's more easy to create uh, with uh, laser cutting and things like that what what you want in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in steel or aluminium and we like the, this uh, this uh, this way in in uh, very uh, uh, practically the, the use of that is you are in a university when the people are, are have a different uh, in in the in the building you have different uh, classroom and uh, laboratory and things like that and it's not enough uh, perfectly clean inside to just have a glass and show it like uh, very frontally. Uh, it's important to give more intimacy, to have this kind of relation mm -hmm. of uh, intimacy and, um, and uh, sometimes you could see, sometimes you, you don't see the, what is inside. What's inside. And mm, to conclude this interview, I'd like to, coming from this um, quotation you just said, materials have a major role in your architecture. Obviously. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We are not. We are not interested by material. And which other materials then that you are more attracted to that can interpret your architecture? I I, I think that uh, material. It's always a question of uh, opportunity. Uh, I, I like very basic material. Uh, I like to work with concrete, with uh, aluminium. I I'm more interested by the quality of uh, durability of material. And uh, of the, uh, interest by the, the it, it's like when you are engineer and you try to make a more uh, long uh, bridge without the, the less material. In architecture, for me, material has this role. It's how to to create uh, an effect, to create a, a sensation, to create a, a function uh, with the less of of things. And for example, in this case. Aluminium was uh, rigid, was uh, not so much expensive, have a good effect with light, and we choose aluminium. We are not interested by material. Uh, we never choose uh, a material before have a reflection on the facade, and uh, we don't. We, we never uh, choose, for example, aluminium at the beginning of the project. We or, or we have an idea of effect. We have an idea of relationship, and we try to find the better solution to do that. Okay. Thank you very, <laughs> very much.